the push she brought from the Bronx, New York. Follow her voice, a stray dog is nice. She's a push she brought from the Bronx, oh yeah. Don't be surprised if you want to listen twice. Make decisions, find the right choice. Know yourself better, find your own voice. It's okay if you need help today, cause everybody needs a little push. From the push she brought from the Bronx, New York. My name is Ellen Stewart, and I am the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Welcome to my show, Recovery Recharged, where we share advice and support from experts in addiction, recovery, and life. First of all, I am very happy to tell you guys that this is an extended show today. We've been doing 30-minute shows, and now we're going to do a 60-minute show because this is a topic that everybody is thinking about, especially in the fall, returning to the workforce after summer vacation, starting the pre-holiday season. We are all concerned about our bodies and, and weight and how we're going to navigate the 2024 fall fall and winter season. So I thought that for the first time ever, I would talk to you about something that I have personally tried myself with more success than I ever really imagined in ways that I never thought possible. So Stay with me because you're going to be very, very surprised. And there's some wonderful things that we're going to share with you today. The topic today is unlocking your mind for weight loss, a hypnotherapy journey with certified hypnotherapist Rita Black. Now, the reason I have this woman on my show is because this past February, I had no idea what to do and how to lose weight. I, like you out there, tried absolutely everything. I stopped smoking at the beginning of COVID and I put on close to 30 pounds that I could not take off if my life depended on it. So I wanted to try hypnosis. I am a hypnotist. I went to NLP training for hypnosis and I just couldn't do it for myself. So I tried something that I thought would be helpful. And boy, did I get more than I bargained for with this woman. We're going to show you today something that you may have never tried before and may give you a tremendous amount of new hope if you are struggling to lose. Rita Black, who is a clinical hypnotherapist and leading expert in both the areas of smoking cessation, so if you have a problem with that, I want you to see her too, and of course, weight loss. She is the author of the best-selling From Fat to Thin Thinking, Unlock Your Mind for Permanent Weight Loss. She's also the host of Thin Thinking Podcast. Her online hypnosis-based shift weight mastery process and smoke-free one, two, three programs have helped thousands unlock the power of their subconscious to have powerful transformations into healthier and more powerful lives. I can't wait for you to hear this woman. Recovery Recharged and the Pushy Broad from the Bronx is delighted to welcome my guru, my mentor, Rita Black. (laughs) Good morning, Rita. How are you? Good morning, Ellen. Oh my gosh, what an amazing introduction. Thank you. You are so generous. Well, if you didn't live up to the hype, and I'm telling you now, guys, I'm down 20 of those 30 pounds. I kid you not. Fabulous. I wouldn't endorse anything that I didn't personally try myself. (laughs) And that's the way it is on Recovery Recharged. All the resources I bring to the table are tried and true and tested by the pushy broad. So let's get right into it. I know the word hypnosis is scary. It's scary. Everybody's thinking they're going to cluck like a chicken and do stuff they don't want to do. Okay. So for those of us out there that don't know, explain what it's like and is it a safe practice? 
Absolutely. So uh, hypnosis, I think everybody thinks of uh, movies like Get Out or The Manchurian Candidate or something like that. You know, you're going to be under somebody's spell. Hypnosis, as you know, Ellen, being, you know, uh, having gone through training as yourself, it's a relaxed mind technique that really just allows us to access the subconscious mind in a way you can't really in your normal waking state. We can bypass the conscious uh, more critical thinking part of the brain so we can access beliefs where our habits, beliefs, and um, our identity in a way give suggestions so that change work can happen really quickly. Just quickly, you know, 12% of our mind is our conscious mind, 88% is our subconscious mind. So typically when we're struggling with something, that's the part that we need to work with. Okay. So, if hypnosis is safe, and basically you're saying going from the conscious mind into the subconscious mind, and if we also look at it as a way to calm down, relax, be comfortable mm -hmm. around it, does that mean anybody can be hypnotized? Well, that's an awesome question. I I do believe, and it this it's a subtle question, but I'm going to do my best to say it really quickly. Uh, there are a couple of People, I are types of person. People with schizophrenia should not be doing hypnosis. Um, and and I highly advise if somebody has severe depression to talk to their mental health professional to make sure that that's going to be a good fit for them. I usually think they need to work with somebody one on one rather maybe than going through a, a course that's an audio or a line. They need to be observed. But uh, most people who want a change can be changed. I get calls really quickly, wives who want their husband to quit smoking. Will you make my husband quit smoking? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. He needs to want to do it himself, right? So you need to want the change wholeheartedly, consciously, so that you can really give access to the subconscious mind because everything flows from the conscious to the subconscious. If you don't want the change, it's not going to be very helpful for you. Okay. So I came to you back in February and I was desperate for some help because I had gone through so many things and nothing had worked. But one of the things that actually helped, and I know people out there sometimes just have faith that whatever they're going to do next will work. And I think that's a big part of what helped me as well, right? The mm. belief that what I'm trying is finally going to succeed. How do you feel about that? I absolutely 100% and agree with you more. And and I think in my process, I when somebody comes to see me and and there's look, there's lots of hypnotherapists out there that work differently with people. But I really one want people to trust me but to to believe in themselves. So I really work with removing the doubt before we even get to the hypnosis so that they can feel supercharged. Now, help Ellen, I know you came in with a lot of belief in yourself, but I do think it's important that whoever you choose to work with, if you choose to do hypnosis, um, you're being prepared for success. Well, I do remember that when we first started, you spent a lot of time with me, quite a number of hours just talking to me before we even went to the hypnosis. So that is also part of your therapist technique, your therapeutic technique, and also getting a feel for what would actually work for me. And that's a really good thing. So I really believe that is certainly part of the process. And I understand from a little bit of what I know about you that this was a personal process for you in the beginning. Could you talk to us a little bit about your personal experience in this realm? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was uh, not, I've been a hypnotherapist now for 22 years plus. Uh, I, and I came to it as a pack and a half a day smoker. And I, a friend of mine quit smoking with hypnosis. I thought it was kind of creepy. Uh, frankly, I thought it was weird. Some poly a guy in a polyester suit swinging a watch at you or something. And I was like, but it really helped her in one session. So I went along, I did it. I stopped in one session and I was like, whoa, if this, and the guy was really a great teacher. He explained to me 12% of the mind's your conscious mind. The other 88% is your subconscious, your habits, your beliefs, your mindset. So in the session, we were really I understood the process of hypnosis is really to get 100% of your brain engaged in wanting the change and shifting that identity and your beliefs so it can happen really quickly. Um, and then I I was 40 pounds overweight. 
uh, I used hypnosis to release that weight and the rest is history. I've kept that weight off for 29 years now. I just turned 60 yesterday. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's absolutely fantastic. And those of us that can see you streaming on the Transformation Network, we don't think that's your 60th birthday at all. Oh, like well, you. I've got some More good Zoom like filters you. working for me, Ellen. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've had a personal journey through this. And in your weight loss journey, did you go through hypnosis as well? I did, but I did it a little differently. I actually listened to audios instead of going to see somebody one on one. I also got into research. So I was using my mind differently, which was a big shift. But I also started learning about people, I, I researched long-term permanent weight management. And because I was like, there's got to be something here. There's like got to be more than, and as you know, because you've gone through my process, there's skills involved in long-term weight management. Like I said, I'm a successful person. Anything that I've accomplished, I've developed skills in rather than been good at, because we, you know, when we struggle with our weight, we get into the good, bad, on or off, all or nothing mindset. And I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done with diets. I'm done with all of that nonsense. So I, uh, so to answer your question, probably a little longer than you had asked, I, um, I did audios and and I started doing my own audios. So uh, making my, my own up based on the skills, et cetera. Well, still it is through the process and what you do in hypnosis is really audio work as well, as well as some visual work. And you have a great voice for hypnosis. So it is easy and comfortable for us. And now you've reached a point where you do things that really change the framework of how we look at weight management. And you've called your program Shift Weight Mastery. Tell us a little bit about the words and what your goals are. Oh, great question. Uh, well, the idea of shift is shifting how you see yourself, first of all, because when we struggle with our weight, we see ourselves as a weight struggler rather than somebody we can trust. I think it's the same with any sort of addiction, right? You see yourself as a uh, troubled or an addict or, you know, you see yourself with a negative self-identity. So the idea of shift, like when I went in for my smoking session, I shifted from a smoker to a non-smoker in an hour. And that to me was unbelievable. But that, that the brain is, you know, when we get married, we say, I do, we become a wife within a microsecond, right? So our brain is very fluid with shifting identity, but we rarely use it in that way when we're trying to make a big change. So shift and then uh, mastery was really mastering those skills. So we're using the whole mind to really, most people like yourself, Ellen, you, you could have taught a course on weight management and people would have lost weight, right? Like when you came to see me, it wasn't like you lacked that information, but you lacked you know, there's content and then there's context and you had all the content. Most people who struggle with their weight could write a book on it. Right. But it's, it's really the, the believing in yourself, like you said, seeing yourself from a different perspective and then um, developing the skills and using your mind to do that uh, from a different framework. So that's why we call it shift weight mastery instead of weight. I don't use the word loss. I use the word release, you know, all that stuff. We, we yes. use a different vocabulary. You no, know, but the vocabulary is extremely important. In the addiction world, mm -hmm. I go into a 12-step recovery room. I go into a meeting and I say that I am in recovery, which is more mm -hmm. important and more powerful to me than saying I'm an addict. OK, mm -hmm. I identify, identify myself with the positive rather than the negative. One of the biggest things that I got from this shift weight mastery program is learning to understand that I can release weight, which is so much more empowering than just losing it. 
right. And take, it's a feeling of I have control over releasing something. And that for me was pivotal in my reframe, which is exactly what you're getting us to do. And I really do like the fact that you have really paralleled this in many ways to addiction, because as you know, food addiction is very key and something that we do talk about on uh, Recovery Recharge. And I've had many food specialists come on and talk about that. But Mm. for us, and this was something that I suffered with too in small ways, not in large ways, but enough for us to talk about and help me with through hypnotherapy. So is do you find that some of your clients actually struggle in a cycle, in an addictive cycle? And how does your program help with being this compelled? Yes. Oh, such a great question. So, and this is something I consider a, an epidemic and most people don't know that they're caught up in what I like to call the weight struggle cycle. And I'll walk through it. And Ellen, you and I can talk about it as I walk through it um, because you're going to be very familiar with it and anybody who's struggling will be very familiar with it. And then we can maybe look at the where the addiction part comes in. So most of us, when we are struggling with weight, we are in a state of pain, right? We don't like how we look or we uh, we don't trust ourselves. Uh, a lot of times we feel very chaotic uh, because we're, you know, trying to do something and we're not getting, you know, I'm going to be good today and we aren't good that day. We wake up self-shaming, self-blaming, feel horrible. So we'll find the magic penny outside of us, some sort of diet, some sort of thing, the next cure. And we'll hop on the bandwagon or we'll just say, okay, I'm going to be good starting Monday. You know, right. Well, and you know that chicken and broccoli, chicken and broccoli, chicken and broccoli, right. (laughs) Or the infamous I'll start tomorrow. (laughs) Exactly. I'll start tomorrow. Right. So, so we get in chicken and broccoli and we probably lose some weight. Now, the interesting thing here is that we start to get out of pain and you know how that goes. You know, like when people stop drinking for a week, they think, oh, well, I'm doing great. You know, I'm doing, I could probably have a drink. I could probably wait. Right. So it's, it's a very similar framework. Then we might, you know, loosen our grip a little bit. And then what happens is an interesting psychological phenomenon. Let's say I go out for pizza Friday night with my friends, a perfectly normal activity, right? But in my brain, I eat that piece of pizza and I was planning to eat the salad and I a little voice pops in my head like, what 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 is it, Ellen? You blew it. You, <laughs> you know, you right? Oh well, so, it all went oh, well. to yeah. it all went to hell. <laughs> right. uh, but 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 the steps are really fascinating because this is where the addiction comes in because because we are so driven by that inner critical voice and it's painful and that rigid diet mindset um, when we when that voice comes in uh, we feel shame all of a sudden we're flooded with shame guilt and it's the same with a lot of addiction right we drink the drink and then we we feel bad we don't like to feel bad right so what are we gonna do? We're going to, our other part of our mind's going to go, well, it's okay. You'll be better tomorrow. And all of a sudden we're released from the shame. And then we get to what? Eat another piece of pizza, right? And another piece of pizza and another piece of pizza. So you can see like in that little psychological loop, there's a lot of opportunity for dopamine to come in and for the addictive part of this because there's such a release from the shame, but then you get to eat more of the uh, dopaminogenic food and and then you're off to the races. And the brain remembers that. It doesn't remember how you feel the next day like crap when you wake up in self-shame again. It just goes, we've got to be good again, and then we've got to move forward. So we loop through this addictive cycle a lot, you know, it, Yeah, you're right. And it's also the same with mood altering substances, but uh, with food, of course, right? Like you said, we get trapped in, I'm either being very good or I'm going to be very bad. There doesn't seem to be an in-between. I'm going to eat five pizzas or I'm going to just eat carrots, right? One or the other, right? So also when, when someone believes that they are 
sabotaging, constantly sabotaging their weight loss mm. efforts. Is this true sabotage or maybe just a reflection of a pattern that has been going on maybe yeah. since childhood? What do you think? I think it's more of a pattern. And that's a lot of what I try to teach people is the first get out of the self-shame and self-blame. Yeah, because the, you, there, anytime you go on a weight loss effort, if you do not believe in yourself, you're going to give up on yourself really quickly. So I try to say, hey, you're stuck in a pattern. You know, you can escape the pattern. But the first thing is you've got to forgive yourself and really believe that you're somebody, you're a different identity. You've got to step into that learner mastery identity rather than the struggler identity that we all kind of carry around with ourselves when we struggle with our weight. You know, I understand. All right. So if we feel like we can't go anywhere and maybe we're essentially set up to fail, we certainly are. If we keep saying to ourselves, I need to go on a diet or I need to go on a diet or I just need to eat carrots for the rest of my life. So how can we find, give us some effective strategies for strategies for breaking free of this struggle cycle and diet cycle? Some of it is your wording, obviously, but give us some insight into how you proceed. For sure. So even without hypnosis, everyone here today listening can start to, just what we've been talking about, Ellen, I, I would say the first thing is to... Uh, forgive yourself and to understand that you are not the problem, but it's really the way that your brain is designed. The, the, the diet part, the weight loss part happens in that 12% conscious, the other 88% wants to stay the same. So you've been in a battle that you're always going to lose unless you start to use your brain differently. So the first one is identity shifting out of, because the second, and you know this Ellen from, you know, the second you get sober, right? Like you start to see yourself differently. You start to have a different self-identity that one that is more self-respect oriented. Um, so when you step into a learner identity, even if you eat that piece of pizza, you're not, you're not a failure. You're like, oh, I can learn something here about myself and my behavior. So that is critical because once you break that old struggle mindset and start to learn, most people who have long-term success made that decision. Like, I'm not going to be that person anymore. I'm going to be this person. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn how to set my life up for success. Well, part of what I like about what your program is all about, and we're going to talk a little bit about that before we break so we can tell people where to find you and you've got all kinds of things working and wonderful stuff, which is how I found you. But first of all, the best thing is learning and the education that you give us surrounding the hypnotherapy. One cannot just be hypnotized and say, okay, I've got it. You really bring hours and hours and hours of clinical education, which is what I was very impressed with. Not only as a former teacher myself, but as a recovery coach who also educates, because it's really important for me not to know just what to do, but why I'm doing it. Mm. So please let us know a little bit about the Shift Weight Mastery Masterclass, where we can find you and how we can get started. Okay. Um, I think, Ellen, there's a QR code uh, flashing up on the screen. And I would love to invite your listeners. It's a free online masterclass. I'm hosting four of them starting then you will see if you uh, go to the, my little website there, you'll see all the different dates that you can sign up. But really what we're going to do in this masterclass is dive into what we're talking about on a much deeper level. We're going to look at like what I consider the three major mind shifts that you can make, uh, you know, without hypnosis to start to engage the, your subconscious mind and remove those roadblocks that get in the way of your weight struggle. And we'll do some hypnosis too. So you get to experience the weight loss hypnosis. Uh, I love teaching this. It's a lot of fun. And uh, so yeah, just sign up and I would love to see you in class. Okay. So 
I know that if you're streaming this on the TTN website or you're gone to my Pushy Broad from the Bronx YouTube channel, you will find, or if you're on Facebook Live, you'll find the QR code that our lovely producer Moxie is putting up on the screen for you to share. If you are not using that or you don't know how to work or navigate the QR, the website for Rita Black is... It's to get to the page for the masterclass, it's www.shiftweightmastery.com forward slash live. Okay. And maybe we can find a way to put that on the lower third if Moxie hasn't already done it. So <laughs> shiftweightmastery slash live. Yeah, dot right. com slash live. Dot yeah. com slash live. And the QR code is there for the Shift Weight Mastery. The first master class is in September. And then throughout this very poignant, important season when everybody wants to eat everything in sight, correct? Yes. it's uh, We're doing the live for a week, uh, but I do offer uh, on demand uh, master classes as well. So please visit my site and you can. Get in for free and learn more about how I help people. All right. So we have about a minute to go before the commercial break. And I want you to come back because we're going to be really get into some of the things that are really helpful for you to even get started with today. So based on this program, you do really always feel that you can help people with their weight loss struggles through hypnotherapy. You found that to be the most successful way, personally and for professionally, correct? 100% just because it, it, it starts with the mind. It starts with your thinking. It, it all starts there. And we get a chance to reframe that thinking in a very big way. So tell us again where to find you. Uh, QR code or www.shiftweightmastery.com forward slash live. I am thrilled to have Rita Black here with us today. Stay with the Pushy Broad. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Transformation Talk Network listeners. I'm Ellen Stewart, the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. We are here with clinical hypnotherapist Rita Black. We are talking about her program, Shift Weight Mastery. And as a personal client of Rita's, I brought this to the surface because this is the only thing that helped me lose weight after I stopped smoking several years ago at COVID. So I'm down 20 of my 30 pounds and we are talking about how and here we are right into the meat of it. I want to talk about when you talk about identity shift, let's talk about the individual shifts from being a struggling person to an actually learning person, what changes actually occur at a subconscious level when that happens, when we do that reframe, that flip? Well, I think one of the things that happens is that we bring to any weight loss attempts, we touched upon this a little bit earlier, a lifetime, we bring an entire framework. I call it the house of struggle, right? We, we're bringing that house on our back, kind of like a snail. <laughs> and uh, within that struggle, we lose so much because we go perpetually go on and go off diets. We lose respect for ourselves. We lose belief in ourselves. We lose the ability to uh, really pull ourselves through any tough moments. Now, most of my clients and students are really successful people in other areas of their life, but the way they see themselves in this area is a very low level. So stepping into that identity and kind of expanding into the moment you're a learner, you have respect for yourself. Wow, I'm I'm in a learning mode. Uh, you start to believe in yourself because there's nothing to fail because it's all about learning, right? It, like I said, if you eat the pizza pizza, you're not a loser. Uh, you, there's an opportunity here to learn the lesson. So I really, really cannot, and, and in the process itself, and uh, I don't know if you, there are different parts of the beginning of the process, Ellen, but uh, we do a forgiveness exercise. So critical to, uh, because self-forgiveness and self-compassion, a lot of people, 
interestingly, and maybe do you find this as well in your uh, coaching your clients, is that people hold a lot of self-resentment. So really forgiving themselves for struggling with their weight. It's so, it seems so basic, but nobody does it. And so when they do, it's so amazing. It's life-changing. And yes, that's exactly what happens, especially um, the clients that are in early recovery and the, the, the clients that I talk to that turn around and say that I have so much shame and guilt around this. In the 12-step recovery, if you were a fan of 12-step recovery, the amend step or the forgiveness step doesn't happen until way down the road. You know, I think, I don't know, it's step eight or nine or whatever, but nevertheless, it starts in the beginning with understanding that you can learn something new, just like you said. If you are an if you are educating yourself, all of a sudden you are completely reframing how you think about something. And of course, everybody goes in with the same thing, right? And I'm sure I've sat in front of you and said, and all of us out there say, I know everything there is to know about diets. I know everything there is to know about weight loss. I know everything there is to know about my own body. You can tell me something I don't already know. Well, I've got news for you out there. Rena Black can give you hours and hours and hours and hours of stuff that you never knew before. Okay. Well, Take it from the pushy broad. Uh, thank you. And but, when you, but you also, uh, yeah. when, and I'm sure you have this happen too, when somebody gets sober, their ears, I call it the third ear, you hear it from a different place. So you might get some of the same information, but because it's being framed as a skill, a lot of, I mean, you know, this, a lot of things that we see as being good on a diet, if you reframe it as skill, like I'm developing the skill of, you know, ex exercise or skill of keeping crap out of my refrigerator that I know is a trigger food, uh, that's a skill. But people see it as being good. And so they never get that lesson. You follow? Exactly. Absolutely. And and not only that, but people like to acquire skills. Just the idea of I have a new skill or a new tool in my toolbox makes it much easier than I just can't do that or I just should do this. Right. It's right. different. And, and much more self-respecting. Yes, without a doubt. So so give people out there an idea. Is there an average time frame in which this shift identity actually happens? Well, I think the identity piece, just like when somebody decides to be sober, happens pretty quickly, but the transformational part of it, it it takes time. I mean, I I the shift weight mastery process is a 30-day process because it really takes about 21 days for the mind to really absorb and kind of process uh, new habits and uh, thought processes, basically, because you're, you're breaking a lot of thought patterns. Uh, but that transformation starts right away. I work with, you know, because I work with smokers as well. I work with a lot of people who are sober and it seems to be the similar thing. You can declare you're sober and be sober and abstinent, but uh, it takes a while for that all to that framework of, you know, because you did NLP, you step into a framework of seeing yourself in a different way. Um, it takes a while for that house to become a solid house rather than, you know, kind of, I, th I think of it like the little house on the prairie, you start with the shanty and then you start building out from there. You build all the rooms. So it takes a little while, but uh, I think that you can immediately feel that identity shift and start to respect yourself in day one. And as with anything else in recovery, whether it is when we're talking about food or we're talking about substance, time, frequency, frequency, duration over time reinforces the habit, right? It reinforces Correct. the brain. So your program is 30 days. People that go into treatment go for 30 days. But then after that, it is constant work to reinforce the change and reinforce the habit. So does that mean that people that have struggled forever and thought that nothing has worked, is it ever too late to learn shift weight mastery or is it possible? Well, you know, it's so interesting. That's such a great question. So many 
people come into my program in their 50s and 60s, and they question that. They say, it's too late. I failed too many times. But research shows that most people who are in these long-term weight studies who are successful have gained and lost over 250 pounds over the course of their life. So if you look at that, that you could look at that framework as like a lot of failure, but I see them as like steps to success. I have clients who are their 60s, 70s, 80s, and it's not just about the weight and health. It's about really conquering this part of their life that they have felt so bad about and that feeling that they've got control feeling like they are the captain of the ship because another thing that we didn't talk about but i think you might well i'll let you ask but the, the really developing that coach you know because when you're learning you also have to develop that inner coach's voice and we really work with coaching yourself and i think when people start coaching themselves in this area of weight management because like you ellen you know so much that once you engage the coach, it came from a completely different place than the critic. It was like, you didn't do that right. All right. Now, well, now that you brought it up, those are magic words for me. Totally magic words. All right. Coach, critic, rebel. You use them in shift weight mastery. I want you to explain them in, in really practical terms in our everyday life before we get to really know how to conquer them. So what's the first thing that comes to mind? That critic, right? I'm bad. I'm I'm shameful. All of those things. And then explain the other two as well. Sure. So I think the critic develops, uh, you know, from whenever we start struggling with our weight, we go on a diet, we blow it, we start to develop this critical voice that has very high expectations. And I think it's, a, as you know, Ellen, it's, it really wants the best for us, but it just doesn't know how to do it. Right. But then there develops this amazing other part of us, which I like to call the rebel, the inner rebel, Who's, who kind of protects us from the critic in a way. It's like, ah, screw it. We'll start again tomorrow, right? Like, don't listen to her. Listen to me, kid. We're, we're going to have a good time. Obviously, the rebel doesn't help us, but I think it develops from that place of, oh, I can't take the self-abuse anymore. Let's just cut that out and go to this other place, right? And so so you, you really, when we struggle with our weight, really kind of live between these two places of being good, being bad, as you've already said, black and white, good, bad, all or nothing. So in the shift, you know, and most people I will say, well, it, if you look at their lives, they do not have this inner communication system, uh, you know, this critic rebel inner they in any other part of their life, right? The, most people who are successful, they have a coach. They they talk to themselves. They're resilient. They get themselves through tough moments in their life. But it's in this area of feeling like that weight struggle cycle. They don't have that coach. So we, we bring in the coach. We start to develop this inner coach and lower the volume on the critic and the rebels so that they can actually engage their mind from a deeper place and use all that information they already know um, in a more powerful way. Uh, as you know, Ellen, because you coach people, you, you can and be tough as a coach. Exactly. And, and, and of course, you know, I can only be pushy, broad, tough, but which is what I thought when, when I, you know, I've kind of, of, of personally anointed you as the shift weight mastery, pushy, broad, because you are <laughs> that coach that turns around and says, let's look at another way, which is exactly the same frame for addiction and recovery, which is why I thought it was such a great parallel. And to put you on the show, because so many people in so many ways struggle with this and also struggle with addiction in the same way. So we talk about always the shame and guilt, the shame and guilt, and then the cycle of, well, screw it. I am just going to go all out because I don't want the rules. I don't want to hear the stuff in my head. I don't want to hear other voices in my head telling me that I can't do it or I have to follow just certain rules and then I'm going to go completely overboard. But education, being a coach, being that cheerleader or that drill sergeant at the right moment gives us a different perspective. It puts us in a different seat at the table. And that makes it possible for everybody, no matter what age, to take advantage of this, correct? 
I think so. And I think what you just described is shifting from the emotional limbic brain to the rational brain where most of our smarts exist, right? And whenever somebody is in, and and I'm sure you've had this when you're working with a client and they're in upset, if you start asking them questions, don't you notice that they immediately start to change their demeanor because they're having to use their rational brain? And so that curiosity, I always say to clients, curiosity, you know, is the way out of any, and that's why the self-learning, the looking at like, well, what happened here? Let's get curious about it rather than critical. Uh, you bring yourself into a different brain. And and that brain is the brain where you're going to learn something and you're going to see yourself in a more respectful way. Also, it takes the emotions out of it. It desensitizes us. I always tell my clients, get out of the play, sit in the audience. Mm. There you go. I love that. And watch the characters and watch your performance across the stage and analyze it. Or I tell people, put it up on the whiteboard like you're analyzing a crime of some kind from the detective's point of view, not the criminal's point of view. All right. Where the only thing the detective is going by is facts and evidence. So bring some facts and evidence to the table, which is exactly what Rita Black does. So tell us again about your shift weight mastery program and how and where we can find you. Okay, but if you would like to come to a free masterclass, <clears throat> please go to www.shiftweightmastery.com forward slash live. If you want to just check me out, you can go to the same place, www.shiftweightmastery.com. Um, and you'll also find uh, access to a free hypnosis session for sugar management. So just remember www.shiftweightmastery.com if you want the free class that's coming up forward slash live and the QR code, I believe is somewhere being flashed across the screen for those of you who are streaming. Uh, but the, the process itself is a 30 day process where you have coaching meditation and uh, hypnosis on a daily basis. And it's all um, online. And we are, we have a live process coming up. That's being led by me uh, in, in October 3rd. <laughs> All right. And I All right. I love teaching this and I, I find it magical just because the I, call, I we have a saying alone we diet together we shift. Um there is something about community and I think you find that right in the rooms or in rehab or whatever when you're going through a transformation with other people there's just a I don't know what it is Ellen what would you say it is like there's a, like a little gas on the fire there it's the supercharge well for us it, uh, you know many of us maybe don't don't admit to it but it's somewhat of a spiritual experience I think in yes. so many different ways because Absolutely. you realize that you're not alone and there is tangible hope and light surrounding mm. things and all of a sudden you're lifted in some way. And I can't explain it any other way, but that's what people who turn around and say to me, I'm really enjoying being in recovery and I'm seeing this as a choice rather than a punishment. Um, that's the way your program exactly seems to me. So do you feel the same kind of thing? I, uh, you put it very well. The, I would say it's spiritual without having to say religious. It's there's something about, uh, especially because I know I'm sure in recovery, you have sponsors and people who are a few miles down the road or a few blocks down the road ahead of you. There's magic for them too, the teachers, because they're seeing how much further they've come on the road. So there's a lot of, I don't know, it's just, and I'm always, always heartened by how beautiful people are when, and willing to recover and willing to be courageous because it takes a lot of courage to make this journey, right? I call it the hero's journey. You know, we know that Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. It is a hero's journey being in recovery, um, making a shift to manage your weight. When you're truly, truly uh, making that decision to make that change, not to go on a diet, but to really, hey, I'm going to, you know, the Rita 40 pounds above the scale and the Rita who, you know, I wanted to be, I was like, that's a journey. That's not just 
Uh, you know, that person is going to wake up and think about herself differently. That person is going to go to parties and say no to things and be okay with that because, you know, it's who she is and say yes to other things. And that person will have created a way of eating that she loves that allows her to live at her ideal weight. But I'm not there yet, but I will get there. And that was the key for me. That's a wonderful way to look at it. I love when you say the hero's journey, and I love that you refer to it as a journey because we all know that we've never thought of it as the yellow brick road, but maybe yeah. there is hope down the road, and I know it is in this way. So before we get to all of the stuff again and how we can find you, I want you to give us a little taste. I want you to provide the listeners out there with the first step piece of advice to begin the weight loss journey and change us to a more mindful place. So the, the shift weight mastery. Give us a few little suggestions and tidbits so that we're all ready to take your master class. Okay. Well, if I have to give you two like things right now really fast, the first one would be to forgive yourself that you are not the problem. You have everything within you right now to be successful. You really just need to start to unlock it. And forgiveness is the first key. I, I think self-forgiveness is the first key. The second would be belief. You need a hundred percent belief, right? And I think you can get that belief very quickly by looking at everything you've done in the past, not as a failure, but as a stepping stone to your success, because I, that's what happened for me. Like when I started to look at everything that I, every diet you went on, Ellen, you learned something from that diet. You learned about yourself. Uh, you learned what you liked and you didn't like. So it's not like it was a failure from a learning perspective. It just was when you, your inner critic was measuring you against, you know, did you lose, you know, all the weight and keep it off, you know, but we want to let that go and just look at, you as the human being going on this powerful journey, the moment you have compassion for yourself, you get yourself back. And I think that is the number one key because you and an of yourself can do this, uh, but you got to let go of all the self-resentment and self-blame. Even if it means just taking yourself outside of yourself for a moment and saying, I believe I have faith. And mm -hmm. I am going to what we do in recovery, let go, let the universe take over or let go, let God, if you're a 12 step recovery person, but turning around and saying, I can do this, or this is going to work. And everything that happened in the past is staying in the past, right? Which yes. is what we do also in recovery. Whatever I've done in the past, I can't change it. I can't worry about it. Uh, you know, I turn around and say regret and shame are wasted, you know, not used, yeah. you know, not useful emotions. So everything that happened in the past, if you're okay, if you didn't hurt anybody, you know, in a terrible way, if you didn't do something that was totally harmful, then you have to let it all go. You just have to let it go. Start the clean slate and say, I'm okay. I forgive myself. I started day one with true belief. Yes. 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 And, and there's another saying, and you may have heard it, the pain pushes until the vision pulls. And I believe having a vision too, and you know this from the beginning of my courses, we do a vision, but come to the free master class because we do a forgiveness process in there. Um, in the hypnosis session. And so where do we can, find you? Say it again. www.shiftweightmastery.com forward slash live. That is how you get into that free masterclass. Uh, seating is a little limited. So sign up, come sign up. And then also the QR code, I believe is flashing on the screen. <laughs> I love that. The pain pushes. Pushes until the vision pulls. I love that. That's my new favorite saying. Okay. The pain pushes until the vision pulls. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So is that the Good. kind of stuff that you come up with on your thin thinking podcast? Tell us about that and where to find that. Oh, okay. Uh, I have, uh, I think you have the, the, the links for that, but if you come to my website, you can access my, uh, www.shiftweightmastery.com. My podcast is listed there, or you can go on Apple, Spotify, any of the major platforms, Thin Thinking Podcast. And we every week we discuss uh, mind 
techniques to uh, ways to hack your brain to work on your weight management, self forgiveness, a lot of different topics, and having some experts on. And Ellen, we will be having you on the Thin Thinking podcast soon too. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I already accept that invitation, which is really terrific. Okay. So shift weight mastery, Rena, give us an idea on the shift weight mastery class. Are you going to be doing a little bit of the hypnosis and, you know, or just what's in general and then do us a favor and spend about a minute. I want you to leave us with really good stuff. I want you to tell us what is the most important thing for us to hear today. And then again, where we can find you. Okay. Um, can you run that by me? I'm hypnosis six years old. On the <laughs> hypnosis on shift weight mastery. Any hypnosis actually oh, happening? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so class? in the in the in the master class, we will be uh, breaking. We we will be removing the self sabotage. Really looking at how you can do that. Really three major mind shifts. Plus, we will be doing hypnosis, and in that hypnosis process, a forgiveness and vision creating process. So it's people love that session. Please come. Uh, today, I, I would say the first thing you can do is take a breath and uh, and forgive yourself. I mean, I would say that that's very doable right now, right today, right? I, I really do believe that. And to look at your past, not as a failure, but as an opportunity to move forward with your power and uh, and into a vision. Start cultivating that vision. Like I said, when I saw myself not just being skinny. It wasn't about that. It was about who I was being out in my future. That was the beingness, not the doingness. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't about being skinny, but it was about people showing up for me. Okay. And www.shiftweightmastery.com forward slash live. Fantastic. And the QR code is up. Rita Black, Shift Weight Mastery. It has been my honor and privilege to have you on my show today. Totally fantastic. Please go and check it out or check out pushybroadfromthebronx.com. I'll give you more information about Rita. If you want some coaching and recovery, I'm there. I am now taking on new clients. Please come back. This is the Pushy Broad from the Bronx saying thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. This is Ellen Stewart, the Pushy Broad from the Bronx saying thanks for listening. And remember, everybody needs a little push. From the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York.